I'll start with Glenn and probably get you to introduce you properly. I didn't do a, 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 a good job of introducing you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Glenn Donaldson. I'm the chief architect and director of enterprise architecture, integration enablement, and data engineering for the Ohio State University. And it's the um, Office of Technology and Digital Innovation, which, in other words, is the CIO's office. Sarah, maybe a little bit about you as well. Yep. Um, hi, I'm Sarah Knowles. Um, I work for uh, ticketing entertainment industry at Ticket Network. I am the AVP and um, chief software engineer of our retail applications, our customer-facing retail applications, as well as um, co-manager of our API manager product, uh, which we integrate with Death through WSO2. Thank you. And Kuntal? Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Kuntal, um, head of integration in Resolution Life. Um, a bit of uh, our company, uh, Resolution Life is a group insurance uh, company, um, mainly focusing on acquisitions and uh, portfolio management. Uh, we have office across the world uh, in US, UK, Bermuda, and uh, Australia and New Zealand. Um, I'm part of the Australia New Zealand branch. And um, um, yeah, uh, pretty much, this is my introduction. Thank you very much. OK. We're going um, to ask a couple of questions from the, the panel, and then we'll open up for some questions as well. Um, I'll start with Sarah, uh, I guess, on this question. What are some of the key components and services that you think, in terms of an effective internal developer platform, that helps to improve the productivity? Right. So um, I know we've talked about this a lot today already. Yes, we did. Um, but basically, the key components are you want to make sure your developers can kind of have a cohesive experience where, front to back, they can focus on doing their job, which is adding features, fixing bugs, um, helping troubleshoot all the environments. So they need all the tools at each stage to manage that. You know, the SDLC process is very large, so they need a good uh, tool to code in with good automated integrations. They need CI, CD, and they need the ability and the autonomy to kind of um, push stuff quickly and be able to test um, and iterate uh, so that they can continue to focus on delivering. Thank you. Anything, anything you want to add? Uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, like uh, we, we discussed so, so many times in the uh, today about the core use session. Um, IT industry nowadays would like to uh, m m like to go to the market fast, right? Uh, so it's, it, it's more about the um, uh, speed to market, business agility, and where do you have a one shop for the developer who can do everything, uh, not. Not, not worry about where to deploy, how to do the scalability, how to do governance, how to do the discovery, how to do the security. So Corio is like a one kind of, kind of platform where we can help all together, and it's a good experience for the developer. So that thing something. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Then I know we, we talk about a bit about, but I think you have kind of built some of these toolings and the chains in the organization, but Anything you would like to add and, you know, going forward? I think things were mentioned, the CI, CD pipeline, and being able to tie into that is very important. Um, also, observability, having that capability and traceability built into the product mm -hmm. so developers don't have to worry about it. Right. And when I say developers, I'm saying everybody that does some code. Okay. I think that is a misnomer. Yeah. Kind of, and then I like the quotes that were presented earlier by Sanjeeva, because there's developers in infrastructure, there's developers in application development. So anything that um, helps any of them be able to be pr productive. Awesome. Thank you so much. Moving on to the next one. Um, how are you planning to measure the success, and what metrics such platforms should offer you? And maybe you can. So the metrics we're looking for would be um, reduced incidents mm -hmm. and uh, problems, right? Um, things like that. Uh, how many uh, services that we moved over to the platform run exactly okay. how they are? Mm -hmm. And then the other metric is zero aspirin. 
That's a good one. I'm not sure whether we can deliver that, but, but we'll get there. <laughs> Till then. Yeah. Moving on to Sarah, anything, anything you would like to add to that? Um, yeah, so I think it's a little bit harder to measure, but I think developer satisfaction is a big, important metric. Um, I know sometimes a lot of frustration kind of comes through dealing with the disparate tools and trying to get everything to work together. Um, so we definitely want to keep our developers happy and kind of measure that as well. Right, right. Yeah. Kuntal, you, you've been talking a lot about like the value for your business, et cetera, as well. So I'd love to hear your thoughts around this. Yeah, yeah. So um, we are very early stage uh, in a choreo journey. Uh, however, the metrics I'm much interested in is, uh, uh, again, the, how fast we can and deliver, um, and also the, what is the cost for API. How, what is the cost overall running the building the API, running the API, and overall infrastructure cost and licensing cost all together, right? Um, so that is something we need to measure it. How fast we delivered, what is, what is the efficiency, and what is the cost into, into my business for yeah. per, per API. Yeah. So you can measure it by like how long it has taken you versus what's Correct. happened previously, right? Previous environment in a mon monolithic environment or purely uh, you know, the on-prem kind of model, how long it takes to deliver from end to end, including the testing, redeploying, and all the things. Right. Like you know, from from the scratch to to actual Again, market, to production. Yeah. and versus the new new way of working, like you know f how fast we can deliver, and also reusability. How many API we can do the reusable? Like <clears throat> like a lot of things we talk about at the core U platform as like you know you can do the discovery, and in the form of AI features we can we can find it out which are the different components connected. So I'm, I know that which consumer provider is, 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 is important, right. how to reuse it, mm -hmm. so how much reusability I can, I can use and leverage it. As, as a measure. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, what processes or governance do you have, and how an IDP or an internal developer platform will help, especially boosting the, the uh, you know, developer productivity? I guess I'll ask you, you yep. that first, and then maybe, yeah. So yeah, so governance things is sometimes bottleneck, and you know, uh, sometimes we deal with a lot of politics and all. So, but uh, anyway, talk about the governance like architecture review committee, uh, API governance forum, DevSecOps governance forum, security and operationals readiness, all those things. So we go to the different different channel. Um, however, <clears throat> if you talk about uh, some some product which provide all the end-to-end -end capability. Um, which has less governance involved. No need to worry about scalability, no need to worry about infrastructure management, not need, uh, worry about, um, uh, about how you, you build it, how to secure it. Doing the end-to-end, -end, including the CI, CD platform, and to deployments and testing, and maybe there's some workflow integrations, uh, like you know, uh, ServiceNow or something like that, so you know, approval process. So that will, that will give the developer, um, and we, we'll, we'll, we can optimize the governance things, and we can reduce those uh, politicals and back and forth things. Thank you, thank you. Add on to it, uh, Glenn, anything you would like to add? I think um, from a governance perspective, it's the big G versus the little G. Mm -hmm. You want to have the, the governance from the technical perspective and less governance from organizational blockage and stuff like that. So if you make it easier and you add the tools that do the automatic checking and um, observability and all those things, then you don't have to worry as much. Right. So uh, less uh, overhead. It's not overwhelming on the developers, so right. et cetera. Sarah, anything, anything you would like to? Yeah, I mean, I could list out all the different things like PCI and security application stuff and how many components are in my system, what are my servers, what are my clusters, are they on, what's hitting traffic, what are all my environments, but like, there's just so much stuff to manage. Um, and it would probably take 20 minutes to list everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> So all the disparate things coming yeah, together. Yeah, and a lot of it um, is really manual, too, um, mm -hmm. unless you have that kind of platform. Um, like even you know, we have a lot of manual processes, too. And um, remembering to do it every step of the way exactly. is like kind of the hard yeah. part. Yeah. <laughs> and that's you know, where something like this, a tool that automates as much of it as possible, really will help. So something, if it's not PCA compliant, you will know earlier than before it's in production, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Uh, next one is like, you know, like, um, you know, I get asked this a lot as well. What are some of the biggest challenges, right? I mean, I, I, I know some of you have built some capabilities in-house and now looking at, uh, you know, potentially, obviously going into um, potentially using Corio, right, or, or an IDP platform. What are some of your challenges, Sarah? What, what do you, what do you had? I, I, I know we talked a little bit about this as well, and you said you have a lot of challenges, <laughs> so happy to. Yeah, um, so I think as you grow bigger as a team and as a company, uh, a lot of the challenges come from a bunch of different people working on stuff at the same time using different technologies and different protocols and um, just kind of building for their use case because that's what they're trying to support. But then when you try to expand that out and um, adapt it in other parts of your business, you hit a lot of friction points, and it's not, it's not usable for this team, or it's missing this feature that this other team needs, or, oh, wait, we totally forgot about like, integrating observability at all, or there's not enough business metrics coming out of it, or whatever. Um, so getting the core stuff in place is just a really uh, time-consuming mm -hmm. and also difficult to maintain long-term, um, because you kind of take over this proprietary thing that you then can't really integrate very well with anything else that's standardized because it's been built over years and years of years of different people right. managing it. Yeah. And people have left as well, and so the knowledge is... Yep. <laughs> yeah, Anything you would like to add, uh, Glenn? Yeah, the biggest challenges in our space is basically um, not built here or the developers want to do what they want, or the l l lack of leadership or change mm -hmm. in leadership that's mm -hmm. happened, and trying to keep that momentum maintained and the standards and the guardrails, um, adhering to those or enforcing those. Because with the leadership change, yep. there comes new rules, or I want to do it this way, or I'm doing it how the big um, competition is doing it. Even in the universities, there's huge yep. competition. So those are really the challenges. It's more political than it is. Than actually technology or solutions, yeah. yeah. Kuntal, anything, anything you would like to add? Yeah, so in my, my world, like, um, it, is, um, it is more about relaxing to change in some, some kind of things. And, and some of the applications grown up organically over the years, and it's become a big ball of mud. So no one wants to take the risk to remove the big ball of mud and simplify it. Yeah. Uh, in a small, loosely coupled integration. And um, I always talk about this one, the integration is like a public transport. Everybody is using it, but no one actually wants to invest uh, anything to that. So <laughs> that's the biggest challenge when you make changes. Business said, why you want to make changes? I'm doing all right. So this is a convent, like giving them the assured that you know, this is the benefit you will get it, long-term benefit versus, versus in a short-term benefit. So that is something um, I deal with uh, in the organizations, so like a you know, challenge with the different stakeholders. They don't want to take the risk. They don't want to invest. They rather than looking with the business, business focus about their the front business, as, as Sanjeeva and other, other mentioning about that one, that is a platform is a is top, bottom layer, application is there, and experience layer. They talk about that one. Mm -hmm. They forget about underneath the core, core infrastructure, and they don't want to touch it. So implementing new thing is, it's a bit of challenge sometimes. So it's a culture change, culture shift. Yeah, it is cultural and, yeah. change, mindset yeah. shift, yeah. and all those things. Yeah. Yeah. And in I mean, there's a saying, right? Peter Ducker said that uh, strategy can, uh, you know, you can eat strategy for breakfast yeah. and, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, the next one is around, I know you're like very early, Glenn, in the journey of the IDP with Corio, et cetera, and you're still evaluating and you're doing the POC, of course. Um, but what are some of the examples that you like to see, right? I can't say that you have seen already because it's the early in the journey. Um, there's some examples like visible to the developers, code developers, mm -hmm. not just pure software developers. Well, and you would like to, yeah. In particular, the, um, the platform and the cell architecture will allow us to uh, isolate, especially big, um, ERPs that function on a different um, performance level, mm -hmm. per se, and I'll say like Workday, is we have Workday, they are not your standard service response or latency and stuff like that, but everything else is really fast. We need to be able to isolate that instead of 
maintaining the same um, synapsis property, you know, the timeout for everything we do. Mm -hmm. And they take longer than that. Right. So this will allow us to um, do that. That's okay. we're really looking forward to that. Awesome. Thank you. Sarah, anything to add? Uh, something that I <laughs> really like about this platform, and it's actually one of the newer features, is the uh, kind of automated overview of the architecture and mm -hmm. the system as a whole and the discoverability. I think that's kind of one of the most exciting things for me mm -hmm. <laughs> as a system architect yeah. because you know, you get a lot of questions of people who come in and like, I don't know if this thing exists. How do I do this? Oh my gosh. Um, where like they can kind of just go find them from themselves in a really easily consumable way. Uh, and they can also see like patterns of how other applications are using that and sure. like, like examples of how to keep things well contained. So I think that's really neat that that just comes built in the platform. Exactly. And it's actually not a, just you. It's a lot <laughs> of other enterprises also have the same <laughs> challenge, right? So I'm, I'm glad that you talk about it because this is what we are seeing, right? So the whole idea that architecture diagram behind it, even to overlap and show the differences between what you thought you were doing and what you, what's actually happening. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Finally, yeah, Kuntal, anything, anything you want to add? Yeah, like um, um, in... I personally want to see, like, you know, mature the product in such a way that any kind of citizen user, user also can do the integrations, not only subject matter expert. So talk about the bimodal integration strategy, right? It's mm -hmm. like uh, core team will use the, uh, the product like Corio, develop that, you know, framework, API definition, standard and practice, CI, CD pipeline, and, and discovery and all those things so that it will be easy for any new user, even the business user, build the integrations. No need to depend on the, uh, only the core integration team. So more maturity so that, you know, more flexible. Um, you need to be scale up, scale down, you need to build some API. It's could be quick. Uh, so like kind of template or framework will provide by the platform and the subject matter expert so that other people can take the benefit. Right. So that is something in the maturity I'm looking yeah. for. So you also kind of put in the developers in the coach, right? So the developers can be in multiple different, right. yeah, different yeah. areas, right? Yeah, I think like, you know, in some part of your journey, most of you all have thought about something like this, obviously, right? Because of the pains that you have gone through. Right? Uh, what made you decide to go into a, a platform as a service offered versus thinking about maybe we should restart and build one. So Sarah, maybe I, I start with you. Yeah. Um, so at my company, it's, it's a pretty histor history, historied company where we have built a lot of internal tools ourselves. Um, over the years, we've tried going down that path with a lot of stuff. Um, and there's always pitfalls, right? So uh, we're a relatively small company, mm -hmm. and we just kind of don't have the manpower and the resources to specialize in that and mm -hmm. also the industry that we're working in. Right. So um, kind of over the years, we've shifted more towards a find the product that works for you the best, evaluate it, make sure it's going to be good, and then continue to reap the benefits of it going forward, which has worked out, I think, better as an approach because yeah. of how small our team is. Exactly, exactly. It helps you to go fast and deliver the real value you are, your business is trying to do, right? Rather mm -hmm. than focusing on something else. Yeah. Kuntal, you Yeah, like, and I'm sure, uh, again, everyone mentioned today uh, about that one, right? Um, so nowadays, industry is, is want to run uh, on credit card. Like, you go to in a service, you order a uh, server instance, go to the cloud provider, you don't need to wait to order IBM or HP to deliver a server or rack in your a data center, you build the network, men spend a month of time to set up your data center. Now IT is running on credit card. You have a cloud provider and go there and get the service, right? So similar kind of things um, um, is advantage having this kind of platform as a service or integration platform as a service. Is, is scalability. I don't need to worry, I need to wait. I want to upscale, downscale. I can do that. I can loosely couple. You mentioned Ganjana, your, your presentation as well. It is not only, um, not only you to run in Corio, if you want to move out the Corio, it is also easy. A uh, lot of monolithic applications built over the time. We want to decouple those. Uh, and also, of course, the licensing model, like pay as you component base, 
consumption-based licensing model, especially a business like us. We are acquisitions company. We acquire a lot of insurance companies. So when you acquire an insurance company, we need to do the heavy integrations. And then sometimes we slow down, so I need to offload as well. Right. So upscale, downscales, and flexibility, all these things is, is actually uh, beneficial for this kind of product. Right, right. Then finally, would I add anything? Um, yeah, um, we're moving. I, I think I've talked to you guys about this before, but we're moving because we're tired. <laughs> and um, it's not, we're tired of doing the do it yourself because we, we started early on on the bleeding edge Kubernetes, bleeding edge Docker, all those things, and with WSO2. Half of my career as an enterprise architect, I think we've been using WSO2. So we've done it the hard way. Yeah. Now we want to rest and be able to reap um, the benefit. Reap the benefits and focus more on the integrations that are coming in. Our work has increased, especially during COVID. Um, it increased. We didn't grow. There's three guys out there at the table, and we had three people before COVID. We now have more more people working on our team, but with that small of a team. Mm -hmm. And the impact that we're making is because we have the tools available. So we want to make more impact with integrations and focusing on the workload and data pipelines and things like that versus worrying about the Kubernetes pod scalability and things like that. Right, right. Thank you. Final question is, I think we had a couple of good talks around the, the GitOps and hybrid, et cetera. Um, open question. Anyone of you can pick that. Um, any of your uh, organizations thinking of those lines? So you probably go in the first phase, use the platform as a service, and want to consider those. Just love to hear your feedback as well, because that's help us as well. In terms of. Um, I can go, maybe. So um, our journey in the Corio, like we have um, in, in our world, we are using other product as well. And some of the legacy product is closely, uh, closely coupled with the systems, like it's point-to-point -point integrations or spaghetti model integration style. And, and we've we done some recent POC, or uh, one of the use cases, like integrating with the, with the mainframe. And, um, and uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are seeing the benefit of having that, um, that containerizations and uh, how CoreU is helping us to build a use cases success for us. Um, so that is something, something I'm looking forward to, like, you know, how, how we can leverage right. platform Kubernetes concept. Like, um, if, you t if you think about that, um, uh, a, a, most of the integrations nowadays built on either Spring Boot framework or Apache Camel framework. We could build our own integration. We can build with the Java or the Spring Boot framework, run on the Kubernetes cluster. We can do that. But the question here is, you want to cultivate your vegetable and then you cook? and make a dish, or you have to buy the vegetable from the shelf and you make a cook, right, food, right? Mm -hmm. So that is things, you don't want to invest so much time on, on, on developing all those Java-based code. We want to use the mixed hybrid, use something, and we can do it. Developer can, can spend their time in a, some creative way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that is something um, we are looking for, the Cori platform in the future. Yeah. Yeah, Glenn? Yeah. Um, so I think it's extremely difficult to completely avoid any type of hybrid environment when you're talking about a corporation that has been along, around for a long time mm -hmm. and has mature technologies, legacy applications, APIs. Um, even if you want to move to a newer technology and kind of like a better centralized way of doing things, there is a migration process. It's going to take time, especially as you need to support um, and develop for your current applications, like your business isn't going to stop for two years or one year while you migrate. So um, I think that, uh, that's kind of one of the only paths that really makes sense, mm -hmm. um, unless you're really starting from scratch. Yep. Thank you. Glenn, finally. I'll just add that um, not wanting to have the lock-in and everything like that, um, being able to use Ballerina, which we were also an early user on, and just migrate over to the platform, mm -hmm. look forward to that. But from a university, as you were mentioning, so we're an old university, been around for a couple years. When I, I put the Z in Ohio State, 
Anyway, um, we have on-prem, we have AWS, we have Azure. Being able to IT. float, if you think about cloud native, think about that more so than whether you're doing something for on-prem or not. Right. Have the developers focus on that kind of thing and develop their code in such a way that they can move where. Yeah. Right. Thank you.